Now everything's cleaned. All the surfaces have been wiped down with alcohol. We've got the um, gloves, as you can see, um, as recommended. The green resin as supplied with the printer, which has been very well shaken. And we're now going to pour up to the line in the vat. We'll switch on the printer. Go to print and we're selecting the file titled not a cube. So it's not very clear to see on here, but you'll, you'll see the model momentarily by the magic of uh, video fast forwarding. Once it comes out of the resin, assuming of course, fingers crossed that everything goes to plan. So I'm going to close the door, press the play button. That's the first layer and there was a definite sucking sound there and as far as I'm aware from various bits and pieces I've read that's a good sign because that's the piece being sucked off the FEP base so uh, fingers crossed on that one that's a good a good start a good sign and what we need to do now is um, is just wait and see what happens with the rest So we've got the first print on the build plate there, as you can see, and I, uh, I must confess to a moment of, um, a long moment of uncertainty because as I mentioned previously, you can't see this going, uh, this building up each layer because it's dipping into the resin. So until it gets to a certain height, you can't actually see what's on the build plate. And I had a moment, uh, a long moment of uncertainty when after the first sort of three or four layers, I could hear it sucking back up off the FEP film. You could hear the pop as it came off. And then I stopped hearing that. And I did have a concern that this was, that only the base or part of the base had stuck to the build plate. Um, but I was delighted to see when, uh, when the platform rose, as you just saw previously, that the model is there in its entirety. So initial impressions, uh, it looks very, very good indeed. I can see some lines there, but that I think is currently just the sort of bits of resin that have stuck to it. There are some air bubbles in the resin, uh, but I did give that resin a good, a very good vigorous shaking um, as per the instructions. But to be honest, for the kind of thing that I intend to be using this for, uh, which is for models that I'm going to paint, air bubbles don't concern me unduly. Now I've got the scraper and I have noticed that this is actually, I don't know if they're all the same and I don't know how well you can see this, but the scraper is actually curved. So it is curved up, those edges are curved up on the side with the, um, the indented portion. And although it doesn't say in the instructions, I'm guessing the idea there is to scrape off in that direction so you're not digging the edges into the build plate. So supporting this build plate, I am going to pry the model off. And I'm, I'm being very, very careful here because I don't want to sort of go too ham-fisted at it and and damage something. Oop, wow, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was very well stuck on there. Um, okay, so that's cool. Um, apologies if I went off camera there. That was much more stuck than I expected it to be. Now what I'm going to use for the cleanup, because 
Um, it's, it says isopropyl al alcohol, uh, 90, 90 odd percent isopropyl alcohol. Now, I'm going to use methylated spirits. Methylated spirits is denatured alcohol. It's much of a muchness. And um, theoretically should work fine. So it should work okay and do the same job. So I am going to give that a try. So we're going to take the model, pop it in the spirits and give it a swish about. Now I'm going to swish this about in here for a couple of minutes. Then it's going to be dunked into a bucket of clean tap water. I could refill the resin vat and make another print if I wished. I'm not going to do that just at the moment. And so what I'm going to do is decant the resin bath back into the resin container. And to do that, nice little tip, I found this on Thingiverse, which you print on your FDM printer. I suppose you could, you probably could, yeah, you could actually print it on this one if you were so inclined. But the FDM printer is going to give you a, a sort of slightly more flexible and more rigid for that purpose print. Take one of your paper filters and peel it open at the seam there. And what you'll have is a square of mesh. Carefully peel that square of mesh away and discard that. Print yourself one of these. It prints in two sections, an upper and a lower funnel. Sandwich that square of fine mesh in between them and slot them together. And you'll see that that holds nice and firm with the sandwich of, meths, uh, meth, the sandwich of mesh in between. And what you then have is a reusable strainer funnel to pour your resin back into your container. So this will catch any detritus as the paper filters will, but unlike the paper filters, which you really can't wash out and use again, you'd have to discard it. With this one, you can wash the whole thing out with methylated spirits or isopropyl alcohol and reuse it. So that's washed and it has now been sit, uh, sitting in a, a bowl of clean tap water, just drying off. It feels, doesn't feel uh, sticky at all. It, it feels almost cured and solid already as it stands. Um, and rubbing on that doesn't feel sort of particularly sticky or whatnot. There's a little bit of flex in it, which uh, probably is the biggest indicator that it's not fully cured. So what I'm going to do now is put the... Um, UV light over it to fully cure it. But what I'm going to do, and now this is something I've read on one of the, I think it might've been on the user group. Um, it could have been on a web, because I've done lots of sort of scouring of the web and it could have been on, on a website uh, where I read a bit. And apparently the resin, the liquid resin, has an inhibitor that slows the curing when exposed to air. And it said on this article that if you cure it in the water, it stops the outer layer being exposed to oxygen and it cures more quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that. I'm gonna put my UV lamp over here. The lamp that I'm using is this one here. It's a 30 watt UV LED lamp. And as you can see, it's kind of floodlight styled like you would have uh, on your security floodlights that you put uh, on your back gardens. So just so you can see on there, that's quite bright as you can see. Um, and it goes without saying, don't look directly into UV light. Hopefully it goes without saying, uh, but don't look directly into UV light. It's not good for you. And especially if it's quite a powerful one and this is reasonably powerful, although admittedly your typical sort of nail lamps would be four nine watt bulbs. So, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of power in those as it stands. So just use a bit of common sense, be, be careful because the, the risk with UV light is, is the potential damage to your eyesight looking directly at them that you, um, because you can't feel what's happening with it because of the wavelength. Um, I mean, if you put your hand underneath, for example, underneath this, you can actually feel the heat on your skin from a reasonable distance away because of course it's, it's the rays that tan your skin. So I'm going to leave that for, I think we're gonna give that about five minutes and give it a couple of minutes, then turn the model around so uh, it gets cooked evenly on all sides. 
and, um, and at the point where we can stick a skewer in and pull it out clean, we know it's cooked. Overview and uh, thoughts and pros and cons. Um, on the cons side of things, it's um, the resin is, is smelly, it is, and there's no disputing that. I didn't personally think it was that bad, and I know people say that different resins have different levels of the odour that, uh, that they expel, and the Anycubic green that came with this printer I didn't think was too bad. I have got another bottle of Anycubic black, I think, and when I try that, I'll obviously be able to see if that's if there's any difference with that. And I do plan to try some Monocure and some other bits and uh, bits and pieces uh, because people have had good results with Monocure and um, and a couple of other resins, Elegoo, I think. So um, hopefully in the future I will be trying some of those. But on the whole, I didn't think the smell was too bad. It's more noticeable when you leave the room for 20 minutes and come back, which I was doing earlier, sort of checking that it was still going okay and checking the camera for the time lapse and such, but not, not so unpleasant that you've actually had to leave the room. But uh, I guess that's going to vary from person to person, but I didn't think it was too bad. Some people say it's noisy as regards the fans, Again, I didn't think so. You've got this fan in here, and as soon as you close the door, that's very, very quiet. And then you've got the fan underneath, which cools the uh, the UV LED screen, and that's a little noisier. But it's no noisier than the Ender 3 uh, in operation. In fact, it's, it's quieter overall than the Ender 3 in operation. You've got the very... Uh, the, the bearish sound of the stepper motor raising and lowering and the noises component is the fan underneath here. It's not very noisy at all. As I say, when you've got three fans running on the ender and three stepper motors going, it's, that's considerably louder. And I don't find that particularly unpleasantly loud or, or um, you know, obnoxious in any way. So again, that's going to be down to personal choice and what you're used to. If you're one of those people who are sensitive to, to noises, and you're just so used to everything being as quiet as possible, then yeah, it's, it's probably going to bug you, but any printer would in that case. And the only other negative aspect or con of this is the messiness of it. And that unfortunately is just down to the fact that it's a resin printer. It's going to be messy as is any resin printer, unless you can get one that is fully automated, fills itself, empties itself and cleans itself, which if you can, is gonna cost you a fortune then clean up is messy. Starting it up, filling it up, not at all, because you shake your bottle of resin, you uncap it, you pour your resin, resin in, you make sure you don't overfill, and you set it going, the plate plunges in, does its thing. So it's only the actual clean up afterwards that's a little bit messy, but wear gloves, take it sensibly, don't rush, and it's not such a big deal. But yes, that is one of the negatives of it, and it's always going to be like that. So if, for example, you think FDM printing is messy, then this is very probably not the way to go for yourself. But uh, if you do want better quality, then you know this is this is kind of the area that you're headed for. On the pro side of it, it's great value. Under comes in under five hundred pound UK um, through Amazon, or under four hundred pound UK on uh, Ali and Gear Best and the like. So for what it is and what it does and the detail, I think that's brilliant value, especially when you consider that something like a, a Prusa FDM printer, you will pay a lot more for and you won't get as good detail. You know, so I'm not trying to start a flame war or anything here. I've never actually used a Prusa. I understand they're very good machines, but I'm just saying you can pay more for a well-known decent FDM that will not give you as good a detail. And that's just plain simple fact. It's, it's, that's just the way it is. You know, a resin printer will give you better detail. So I think it's brilliant value from that aspect of it. I think it's a nice looking thing. It's very solid, it's all metal. It would sit there on your side next to, uh, you could sit that in your kitchen next to, next to your, your fully automated coffee machine and, um, and all your, gadgetry and what have you, and it wouldn't look out of place. You could sit it next to your stereo in your room and it wouldn't look out of place. I think it's quite a pretty thing. The touch screen is great, not because it's a touch screen. Um, that doesn't interest me in the least. Um, it could have buttons down the side and I would be okay with that. 
So touchscreen or otherwise, I really don't care. That makes no difference to me. But I like the fact that it has lots of readily available information when it's printing. It tells you time elapsed, time remaining, which layer it's on and all the rest of it. And actually shows you a little image of the image that it's flashing up onto the LCD at the time. And that is just gives you so much more information than say the ender which just gives you a progress bar so with this you can see the time elapsed and the time remaining and you can look at it and provided your slicer is relatively accurate you can say okay there's an hour to go i'll come back in 50 minutes whereas with the uh, the ender and the progress bar you're just best guessing it 50 percent through on the progress bar and <sighs> take your pick it could it, it could be you know, two hours, five hours, one hour, 30 minutes. It's, it's just one of those things. It is what it is. Um, not that I'm criticizing the end for that. That's just the way it is. But I do like the fact that this has got a lot of information on the screen and it tells you what it's doing. So that's nice. It's nice and simple otherwise. Good solid um, power jack at the back there. Much more sturdy than a lot of these types of power connector. Uh, same with the USB stick, a good solid rocker switch on the side. Nice carrying handles down here, adjustable feet. I thought that was a really nice feature. And I did use that to level that on this surface to make sure that the tray was as level as it could be. Um, so yes, overall, I, I think it's brilliant. Would I recommend it? Absolutely, I would, most definitely. Because the next step up, I believe, is something like the Form Labs, which are considerably more expensive. And then the next step down, while it might print as nicely, you've got the Elegoo, which is the round one, with a, which has a round sort of, red plastic lid and then the one that Neris reviewed a few weeks ago which is uh, very similar looking but it has a square plastic lid now they the majority of the construction on those on both of those as I understand it is plastic for one thing which means that they're not going to stand up to as much use and also I can see that lid getting fumbled dropped hitting something and shattering quite easily whereas this that's you know that's not going to happen that's stuck there, it's not, it's not falling off and there's no risk of that. This is just really nicely made and I think it's absolutely fantastic value. So yes, if somebody, somebody's looking to get into resin printing, I would say this is a perfect first machine for that. So that really wraps it all up. I hope this whole thing has been useful for anyone watching, especially anyone thinking of getting one. But of course, before we go, you're going to want to see the print. And I did say in the last video that I am going to draw comparisons between this and the Ender 3, which is the FDM printer that I have. I'm not showing you comparisons to tell you that one is better than the other. I'm going to draw the comparisons just to show you the difference between the two prints. And I think you'll actually be quite surprised at the quality of the one from the Ender 3 and a well dialed in FDM printer can give you good quality prints. But you will be able to see on the close-ups the kind of detail differences that I'm referring to as regards resin versus FDM. So we're gonna have a quick look at that. So the bit you've been waiting for, the detail shots of the prints, the red one, obviously, as you can see here, given that you've just seen me printing with a, with a green resin, the red one is the print from the Ender 3. Now, ignore that infill pattern at the bottom there. That's essentially me being lazy, thinking the base was thicker than it was and wanting to save filament, and uh, hence the infill there. And if I'd printed that solid, that obviously would be a bit neater. The only real problems with this one because of the nature of the print are little gaps in these steps of the of the upright tower there which that's just you know that's that's simply unavoidable because of the nature of it and some ringing on the x the letter at the back which hopefully you can see there and again that's just because the walls are actually very thin it's just the way it is now you can see if i move this so that I catch the light, you can see the layer lines and this is where the primary difference is between the two. Now obviously the resin print is incredible quality as you would expect it to be and if you look at this here I do have some sort of lines going on there so I'm going to have an ask on the forum, but I think I might actually have a, a slightly wobbly um, 
a slightly wobbly gantry on the lead screw which I need to tighten up and this is not an uncommon issue and this is what this particular not a cube file is designed to test so I thought this would make the perfect first print for that reason but if you look at the bottom ignore the air bubbles as I did mention that there are air bubbles I'm not interested in the slightest in those as long as we've not got dozens of them affecting the surface of the print because I'm going to be printing things to pin to paint so doesn't bother me in the least uh, but obviously bear that in mind that if you do shake your resin vigorously you are likely to get air bubbles in it so there you go guys that's the end of the review um, apologies if it dragged on a little bit but there's this just seemed to be a lot to go through maybe I was a little overly careful setting everything up and cleaning everything and what have you perhaps I don't know but I like to make sure everything's as clean and spotless and spot on as possible uh, but I hope it was useful and thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video. The next video hopefully will be a review of a GTEC FDM printer that I have for review which I've got with ideas in mind which I can't go into detail about because certain people might be watching, being, it being near Christmas and all that kind of thing. So um, hopefully we'll be reviewing that. It's a nice little um, entry level FDM printer. So watch out for that one and then it is a little awkward just at the moment with Christmas coming up and, and all but I want to do I do want to get back onto the cappuccino and finish that build so I can start the Yamaha YZFR1M model kit proper and we can we can get moving on that one so uh, do bear with me sorry for the delay on everything but thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.